Here. Thank you. Xander? Here. Thank you. Anika? I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, my very, very, very spotty no, we, service we, right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alex, Alex alerted us to it, and you're okay. and we're glad that you're we're glad that you're able to join us. And I'm Austin. I'm here, and we're joined by Craig from Colliers. So we have two sets of minutes that we need to approve. The first are the minutes from July 26th, and the second are the minutes from September 22nd. Both sets of minutes are in the packet that was distributed for this meeting. So let's take up July. Is there a motion to approve the July minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much. Is there are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay. To vote to approve, yes. Not to approve, no. Sharon? Yes. Alex? Yes. Thank you. Christine? Yes. Xander? Yes. Thank you. Anika? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Minutes of September 22nd. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much. Okay. Any corrections to the minutes of September 22nd? Alex? Yeah, I sent this to Angela, but on the <laughs> third page um, where it's the motion for the FF and E budget. Yeah. Um, I just asked her to clarify. It says, you know, Lefebvre asked if an opportunity exists to reverse this vote in the future, but I asked her to clarify that what I had asked for was that we could have the designer look as if the full budget were there. Um, and then and then we could cut what we needed to rather than, um, so cutting the budget, but having the designer look at the whole budget. So I just asked her to, to make that change to my comment. Could you say that again? Sure. So just in the form um, of in the form of what you're asking her to do. Yeah. So um, what I said, I sent her a note saying I'd like to make sure my request is in the minutes that if we cut the FF and E budget, that we can still work with the FF and FF and E designer okay. as if we had the larger full FF and E budget and then make choices of reductions ourselves if needed based on final project costs and funds raised. So you're asking that that be inserted into the minutes. Correct, and I gave the that uh, to Angela. Yeah. Great. With, without objection, is there any objection to amending the minutes or correcting the minutes in that way? Great. Okay. Any other correction to the minutes? September twenty second. All right. Voting yes to approve. No, not to approve. Sharon. Yes. Um, Alex. Yes. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Xander. Yes. And Anika? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you all. Um, the town manager report. So I'm not in a position to report for the town manager, but I will report about the town manager. Uh, we have had discussions and continue to have discussions uh, to try to finalize a memorandum of agreement, uh, the memorandum of agreement addendum, as it is called. Uh, so that it can be presented to the library board for its discussion and approval and signed by the town manager. And I think we have made good progress in our conversations and are very close to having a document that can go to the library board of trustees. Uh, Sharon, do you want to say anything about the so-called additional state funding initiative? Uh, we meet tomorrow with um, with Mindy and Joe um, to find out uh, what what progress has been made over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, what progress? I guess we should say, if any, has been made if over the, if if it's been made for the over the past couple of weeks. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Um, you know, as soon as the memorandum of understanding is finalized, right? Then the town manager is in the position to sign whatever is necessary to sign and give the go ahead to um, uh, Feingold Alexander. And Craig, just, I, I think you already know this. Our hope is that the board of trustees of the library will uh, discuss and hopefully approve on October 12th. Um, and uh, 
but we'll see. The trustees may or may not um, be ready to approve at that time. Okay, next is the financial update. And without our good finance director, I don't know that there's anything that we can that we can do. Okay, item number five, uh, Colliers. Thank you, Austin. I'll share my screen to help with the discussion. Um, I'm getting a message that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Please hold. How's that? Give that a try. That works. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, so taking things in order, uh, right. the agenda. The first is the designer's proposal uh, regarding um, rework to the layout, floor plan layouts. Um, this is the proposal that was submitted uh, September 27th or maybe 28th yep. Um, yep. In, the, in the amount of $55,000. Was uh, so uh, Sean had some questions, um, which I answered by email. Uh, yep. Does anyone on the committee have any questions, or would you like me to sort of, a, you know, give the rationale for this, or are we? I think the rationale is so to speak in the document, right? But yeah, right. Christine. Yeah. So there was only this document. They didn't give any um, attachment to what that fifty-five thousand is made up of. Correct. And um, they did explain that, you know, they're estimating it's a, sort of six weeks of work. Um, on the schedule, I'm showing eight weeks to allow for uh, this committee to review the layout and, you know, make any adjustments as needed and, and ultimately approve it. So um, they said that they're going to try to expedite um, that six weeks if possible. But um, six weeks, fifty-five thousand dollars is uh, probably where this this will land. Christine, um, so they say it's to rework the floor plans, and all this was discussion in schematic design, getting feedback. Um, some of that would be considered normal business and included in their previous estimate. So how did they adjust like, or did you have a hand in figuring out what was above and beyond that and why they need to request this extra? Very good question. Uh, yes, you're correct that um, during schematic design, as with all the design phases, it's an iterative process kind of back and forth. Um, the changes um, that they received in that this proposal will address were received very late in the schematic design. I mean, schematic design was only two months long in an attempt to get the project moving and uh, as quickly as possible, they compressed their design to those two months. So uh, when we received this, it was at the very end of that time frame. And so if there were, if the changes were uh, minor in nature or in limited areas, I think they would have been able to absorb that in their normal design process. But um, the layout modifications are more of a rethinking of kind of the strategy and um, placement of different areas on different floors. And so it does require them to basically take a big step back um, and then rework some of the stuff just to kind of finish up that schematic design phase. So uh, if, the, if the changes were smaller or localized or earlier, you know, much earlier in the process, they would have been able to absorb them. But because it came in there larger and at the end of the phase, that's why they're asking for this additional um, design fees. And the, uh, I know you didn't ask, but the amount of $55,000 is what, you know, my office would anticipate to see for, um, for this scope of effort. Christine. Okay, so building on that, um, I was a, uh... A little confused where it says rework of MEP systems because in schematic design, they I wouldn't have thought they would have dove very deep on that. Um, 
and we haven't seen MEP on the diagrams. Just where did that come from or what's that? So uh, that's a very good point. So at this stage, uh, the MEP design would be largely diagrammatic, um, but um, I think they wanted, because they're working with um, their 3D model, the, the BIM model, um, and they've been sharing that with their consultants. The consultants um, have done some work, um, maybe behind the scenes to kind of lay things out um, at uh, a schematic design level, not, not a completion level. Um, those consultants now are gonna have to get a new, new version of the model and kind of same thing, kind of work backwards and or, or take a step back um, and redo some work. So wow. yeah, it's not, I don't think that is the uh, a very large portion of this, but. Um, and again, an attachment with that, a breakdown of that would have been helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And I can see, you know, so a sub sort of raced ahead, but we were in schematic design, not design. I would hate for us to have to be paying for an over eager designer that, if you know what I'm saying, but that's yep. your call here. So what I can do is I'll ask for a breakdown of the $55,000, which I'm sure they can uh, put together pretty quickly. I'm thinking maybe like a bulleted list of um, sort of the effort mm -hmm. that they that they think will um, need it. And then maybe how that $55,000 kind of falls across those different uh, tasks or activities. So I will certainly ask them for that. And is that a 55 that's, or could they possibly come back again? Because you said... Eight weeks, six weeks, you know, how much more are they going to need, if anything? Right. I do. I don't think it will come down any from the 55,000, but. Um, no, I didn't then, come down. I just don't want to see it go up. <laughs> yes. So this would be a lump sum. So um, it would not go okay. up. Yeah. Last question. Thanks, Austin. It was, um, I don't see anything on this. I really feel since there is so much rework and that's why we're paying for extra money because so many things have changed and have to get adjusted. I feel strongly about renderings. I know they outsource those, but they're not mentioned here. Would that be included? Is there extra money? I think we're going to have to see an exterior and interior rendering if we're going to move forward. So I did uh, broach that topic with them. Unfortunately, uh, my memory is failing me. I can't remember what they said about it, but I asked, uh, okay, now I remember. So the um, at the end, so this is mostly layout work. So the first six weeks, let's say eight weeks, um, they'll be doing work in plan for the most part. Um, and so they wouldn't have any new 3D imagery. Right. But then um, at, after that point, shortly thereafter, they'll be able to produce some 3D images, especially of that interior. Uh, I think the exterior, we can imagine what it would look like without the sawtooth roofs, but the interior uh, views, it wouldn't be a photorealistic rendering, but they did say, yeah, they could start producing some 3D imagery, say two months into that DD phase. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, Alex. Um, thanks, yeah, I just wanted to, um speculate huh, that the the MEP, I'm wondering, one, the changes in the bathrooms, which would greatly potentially impact, but then also um, we did um, the sustainability committee, based on their recommendations, we did actually have the energy, they had, they paid an energy modeler to do work. And so as they're making changes, I know that they always are trying to think about getting to our EUI target. So I'm just wondering if that's part of why the MEP is in there is maybe one of those things. So putting it out there. Could be totally so, wrong. Just putting the information so, out there. <laughs> so just for, just procedurally, I, I want to make sure we, we're, we're, we're kind of all on board. Do you want Craig to ask Feingold Alexander to provide a more detailed, uh, but not only a breakdown, but a more detailed explanation of what this work is? Or do you feel that based on the questions that Christine asked and you've asked and the responses that Craig has so far given that you are, again, this is this invoice will be directed to the town manager, right? And the finance director. Uh, so at some point, uh, Sean will bring this back to us, I assume. Uh, after his questions have been answered, it's to his satisfaction, right, Craig? 
Um, yes, I think so. Or is it your was it your intention that the board uh, that the excuse me that the committee recommend to Sean that we approve this that we go forward with it? I, I think the latter is probably the most um, time efficient method. Okay. So yes, okay. as you as you said, the this proposal is addressed to the town manager. The town manager has the authority to you know approve it. Um, the timing is we would like to have this approved um, at the same point that they were giving them the go ahead yep. to move into design development. Yep. Um, so yeah, so perhaps if you the, this committee made a recommendation that would kind of help uh, the, that process. Okay. Any other questions about this from Final Goal Alexander? And are you ready to vote to recommend to the town that they approve this proposal from Fine Gold Alexander? Okay. If someone would move the approval of this proposal from FAA. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Sharon? Yes or no? Yes. Alex? Yes. Thank you, Alex. Christine? Yes. Thank you, Christine. Xander? Yeah. And I seem to not see Anika on the screen anymore. So Austin votes yes. Okay, Craig. All right. Thank you all. Um, uh, can we do this when we're out of quorum? We have a quorum. There are five. Yeah, there are, there are five of us. Great. Um, so next thing on the agenda was the schedule update, which uh, we don't really have an update. You know, this is the the latest schedule it has not changed since the last time we looked at it. Let me see if I had any notes about it. I do not. Um, next topic is the budget. And for that, we I have not changed the budget, but I do have a couple of updates. Oh, okay. I see Christine's got a question. Oh, sorry, Christine. It was just on the schedule. Um, does that triangle, the fade out, will that get shifted even further? And does that jog anything else? Because we're already in the first week of October. Because you were saying we're paying them for six weeks more, you know. I just... So those six weeks of work, eight weeks total effort, um, is represented here by this um, blue rectangle. Um, so they will be doing that those layout updates in this phase, and as we sort of discussed in the past, that we're, the door is still open for some input into the design that will still have right. a you know a noticeable effect. Then right. once we get to sort of the December timeline, now we're in the, the typical design development portion where they're, um, they've completed those layout changes and now they're advancing the design. And then I added another blue rectangle here for an extra month of um, value engineering, should it be needed, mm -hmm. um, and sort of back and forth and getting that accepted. Great. Getting to a place where everyone's comfortable with the budget and the, um, and the design. Thank you, Christine. Xander. Xander, you're muted. Thanks. Um, I'm looking at the period of impact on color selections and interior materials. Um, I don't know if I'm saying anything that's actionable more than just expressing some unease at the idea of like, we, given the back and forth of like start, stop, um, going back to people while there are so many other balls in the air and start talking about uh, materials and color selection seems really difficult in this moment of time. Um, and then coming into November when we're looking at, you know, holidays and whatever, uh, it's just a very crunched timeline. And I think something that the previous discussion brought up for me is like, when we end up making suggestions late, they come with additional costs. Right. And uh, I don't want to recreate a scenario where we are more or less discouraging people from making suggestions because it might cost us an additional 
yearly salary to do the extra design work. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, I, I wasn't, sh as you said, it's not actionable, right? So it's not, you're not suggesting any change in the schedule? Xander? I don't, I don't have an actionable suggestion okay. on how to avoid this. Um, yeah. I'm just expressing a disease yeah. uh, and, or an unease and, and wondering if anyone else maybe has an actionable suggestion on what we can do about it. Craig, what do you think? Um, I think we would uh, continue the prior process of uh, collecting or continuing to collect um, or being open to receive comments, but then reviewing them against where we are in the um, process and that where we are in the process would be part of the decision to um, incorporate a particular comment into the design or not. But we're halfway through October. That's, I think, part of the point. And if we, um, it, are you, were you anticipating that this little triangle would move out at all, or this is it by the 1st of December, given where we are in terms of the FAA work? I think um, we, we had this triangle previously resided at the end of schematic design <laughs> and allowed sort of comments to trickle into the design development, but at a um, you know, a smaller and smaller anticipated impact yep. to the design. Yep. Because we've basically been on pause or the design team's been on pause for two months, yeah. that period has moved out as well. And so I think there is still an opportunity to incorporate ideas from the public at large into the design. But as before, you know, we're now in this period where they're not going to have as much impact. So in and so to address Xander's concern or unease, um, when the design subcommittee is reviewing those ideas, um, potential cost is something that we would factor into that decision making. Okay, but I, I, Alex, before I call on you again, uh, Craig, if I look at this triangle, it starts on the at the beginning of October. Yes. We are now at the, you know, I don't know what's today, right? The the 10th of October, so to speak. So it, it's going to slide a little bit out, no? Uh, yes, you're, you're absolutely okay. right. I'm sorry. Thanks, I, I misunderstood thanks so much. the question. Okay. No, no, that was my question. Um, um, yep. Alex? Yeah. Um, so I'm super confused and I apologize. But so my understanding was that when we went into design development, that there would be choices so that we would like, so the outreach subcommittee hasn't been actively doing anything because as far as I knew, there isn't anything for us to be doing. So, I mean, so I guess I'm trying to sort of reconcile. I don't even know what data I'm collecting from the public. Like I, it was my understanding. And again, if I'm wrong, was that as we're working with the designers, there are going to be <clears throat> ideas or choices. And then that's when we would sort of activate ourselves. So I'm trying to figure out how, if the designers are working for six weeks to finish schematic design, I don't know what I'm collecting data on. So I, I'm, I'm confused and do, are, are we still having a period where there will be choices that we can go out to the public and say, you know, whatever. I, so yeah, kind of like we did with the, like, you know, we had the exterior materials, you know, we got to throw it up there. And when we, you know, I, I sort of, that was my impression was there were going to be sort of actionable items that we were given that were concrete that we could present to the public. I mean, it references the impact on color selection in different materials. We can't get anybody's input until we have something to show them. Exactly, that's why I don't which understand. Is, which is why I was suggesting that this little triangle thing has to move a little bit because uh, otherwise I don't know what we're, what we're doing, but Craig, do you have a response to Alex? Um, um only to to show you know yeah. that that triangle was always part of this yeah. Yeah. design development it occurred in the design development phase. Um, yes, at some point, you know this this was a, a somewhat of a crude diagram. You know, at, at some point, um, say in early construction documentation, there'll be parallel discussions about you know interior material colors and carpet selection. Is that something that you that the town wishes to have public input on? 
Um, if so, that would be unusual. Um, typically, the design subcommittee would be given that um, authority. Um, but that is, yes, a decision that would not be made for a you know, number of months. So potentially something that you could seek public input on. But that's a decision that would also need to be made somewhat quickly, sort of like within a month. Usually within a month, the design team presents uh, an interior uh, color palette. And then by the end of the month, you know, it's gone back and forth with a design subcommittee or a building committee, and then it's resolved. So if, if we have responses within sought, two weeks, I mean, if we have something concrete, I mean, that's, yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to, I feel okay. like we, what was relayed to us and what we relayed was there's this open, you know, there's just sort of this open, give us your hopes, dreams, wants, whatever, and we'll put what we can into the schematic design. And then later, you know, there's going to be less say, but there's going to be concrete options to be made. And I feel like we have built um, a pretty good process for, you know, when we had the exterior options, I mean, we got a ton of responses really quickly. So I'm not worried about, you know, if you tell us we have two weeks and here are the choices, that's fine. I just, we just need to know what's happening so that we can prepare people for when and what the choices are. And we, I just, I just want to be clear and, and I'm not clear currently. Well, I think the way to be clear is to tell Craig what we want to do. And, and then that, right? And Craig, you had in this diagram all along this idea that we would be like soliciting comments. And the question is, when are we going to get things for which we can solicit comments? Christine, uh, uh, Christine, and then I don't know if Xander, your hand is still up, but Christine. I just want to um, say yes, Craig, to me, it is not industry standard is color and interior materials are usually chosen in house. Um, and we could do it differently. Of course, this is Amherst, but I just want to because it's hard to make everybody agree on color, you know, this and anyways. But in the process, uh, building on what Alex is saying, does it go to the design subcommittee first and then roll out and the out outreach or are we throwing it to outreach first? And then, and Craig, part, you would maybe have some insight on this part. FAA, do you think they'll just bring us like half a dozen color schemes or they'll narrow it down to two or three? And in that case, can't the building committee just choose which one which believe me that will be hard enough to get all of us to agree on what color we want anyways um so um i don't know exactly what fa is planning on as far as what options they will um, show but in my experience when i was on the design side it was more like you said uh, christine two or three kind of uh palettes like yeah. here's a warmer, simpler palette. Here's a cooler, uh, more patterned palette. You know, does it, it either of these striking a chord, um, and then kind of go down that path a little bit, whichever direction the um, committee prefers or the community prefers, and then um, develop that a little bit more until at the end of say at the end of the month we've got a, um, a color palette that everyone is comfortable with. I like how you said comfortable with, not like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not not everyone's gonna like it, but one that people feel is appropriate for the um the, the building. I, I share, I think, a little bit Alex's concerns, and it may have been our misunderstanding. I think what we need to do is we need to um move as expeditious as we can to a point where we have something to look at. And uh, I believe that it would be in the interest of the project. And I think what Xander said is exactly right, which is we want to restart. We want to re-engage people. I think it would be in the interest of the project to solicit whatever feedback we can solicit. And of course, we can do it somewhat differently than we did it the last time where there was the outreach committee and then the design committee went and ranked all the suggestions. But I think all this pivots on when are we going to have something to look at <laughs> whether it's the design subcommittee or us or or any other group but Z xander i think your hand is up again xander yeah i guess um i guess like i 
a I hear all the difficulties about like picking a color. Like my wife and I can't agree on color in our own house. And there's two of us, right? Um, by the way, it should be blue just in case anyone's wondering. Um, but the thing that I was going to say is like, when I think of re-engaging the public, there are a lot of really big ticket conversations that we're having um, regarding some of the really big issues that have come up, right? The uh, cost that has increased. Um, for us to go back to the public and be like, and we have six weeks to talk about a color or a building material just doesn't seem in line with the same tone um, of the work that's being done at these meetings. And so like, if there is work for the community to be doing uh, in engaging in the legislative process, right? Um, let's let's use that and, and really re-engage the public on the level of the challenge that is in front of us um, instead of trying to minimize uh, what is what the challenges are in order to make it more palatable to go back to the public. I think what we need to do is to be clearer and I think that um, we need to be clear about what it is that we're trying, trying to achieve. And I'm gonna say what I think I've heard, but maybe I've missed it. What we wanna achieve is we want some opportunity for continued engagement with the public. We want the public's engagement to be meaningful in terms of uh, we're not gonna be just showing things where we've already decided things. And we need to do that in a way which does not further delay uh, the design process. Did I get it right? Okay. All right. So, so I hope I hope we have some clarity about that. Craig. Um, yes. Uh, so I the takeaway I'm hearing is that I will ask the design team to help me um, understand so that I can report to this committee. Great. What decision points are remaining and Great. approximately when in the process those will fall. And I that think would be that very will helpful. be information that will help uh, this committee decide how to engage the public and make those decisions. That would be very helpful. Okay, any other questions on this, on the schedule? Xander, is your hand up anew or is it? No, sorry, I'm just really bad at Zoom. Oh, that's okay, not a problem. Craig, next. Yes, thank you. Um, next, we had a uh, budget and the reports I have on budget are, sorry, let me, I'm adjusting my screens here. Uh, last week or last meeting, we talked about uh, furniture and equipment budget mm -hmm. and um, the question of the book sorter. Did it include the, the quote that uh, FAA received from one of the vendors? Did that include installation or not? And um, the answer to that is yes. And the other question was, well, how well, in it did, it, did it include installation or not? The answer is yes, meaning it did include installation. Yes, it includes installation. Yes. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> the next part was, we knew that quote did not include any um, money for on the RFID tags and mm -hmm. uh, associated equipment. So we asked for that and they were only be able to give us a range based on some broad assumptions. Um, but they took another look at the layout. Hold on a second. So they took another look at this layout, uh, I believe with Sharon, um, and they were able to refine that cost down to around $229,000 for this equipment and installation. Mm -hmm. And then the RFID materials and equipment would be somewhere between $150,000 and $200,000. And so that gives us a range of having a functioning um, book sorting and RFID system of $379,000 to $429,000, somewhere in that range, which if we look at our budget does fall within our line item of audiovisual equipment and book sorter, 440,000. Great. The, if we end up on the upper end of that, 429,000, it doesn't leave a whole lot for AV for equipment, yeah. $10,000, $11,000. Maybe that's one room's setup. If that 
books order and RFID comes in in the lower range, $379,000, then we still have um, some, a good amount of money for AV equipment. So the good news is it's within our budget um, and we can continue to you know, work with them to refine that number as the uh, more questions get answered. Are there any questions about that particular item? So I just have a question about contingency and how it gets used. Yes. So we have a we have a contingency fund. So suppose uh, in the budget we have a contingency. Suppose we're on the upper end for the RFAD and the and the books order. Uh, is it would it be uh, imaginable given uh, as as one might might say industry practice to use some of that for AV equipment? That, is, that would be uh, an appropriate use of uh, one of the contingencies. That's the owner's project contingency. So right. this was $1.5 million uh, yep. for added costs between now and the end of the project for optional items. Good. Good. Um, Assuming that there aren't more pressing needs. Right. Yep. And then um, what we would not, the yep. contingency we would not use that is construction contingency Good. just yep. for un unforeseen things that crop up during construction. Uh, I think I see Christine. Christine? Um, talking about industry standards, um, I, I'm still really concerned that we even have a 2.5 contingency percentage there. Um, for where we're at at this early design phase, I don't know, just normally those would be much higher right now. And I'm really concerned since we have such an ambiguous kind of unknown why are we using such non low numbers? Craig. Um, so this count, so we're still, because there are things up in the air, we're still using this low, mid, high range, oh. but the blue column is what we're sort of focusing on. And the percentages, the construction contingency is at 5%, which is a healthy construction okay. contingency. And the owner's project contingency at this level is 3.5%, which we sort of noted up here. Do you have any concerns that that 3 point which is will come back and bite us? No, uh, the, the owner's project contingency is, um, you know, it could be anywhere from 25 to 5%. So three and a half is kind of in the middle. So it's not like a really robust owner's contingency, but it's also not an emaciated contingency. So I think there is, um, in you know, $1.5 million um, feels like an okay number. Um, we'll be able to cover kind of a lot of things with that. Right, or Christine. Absorb, or absorb costs, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a safety measure. It's not just like you're holding it reserved to buy fun things. I... Right. It's for it's for things that, well, I think of the owner's project contingency as things that crop up, ideas that come up after the budget is set that will really, you know, be a, a, a large benefit to the say, function or usability of the project. Um, whereas the construction contingency is more like things that uh, are out of your control. So the owner's project is within, say, this uh, committee's control. Construction contingency is to pay for things that are outside of your control. But as we roll out, if things become tighter, you absorb any of these, don't you? So uh, you're saying if uh, the next like if cost estimate comes in very high? Were, but yeah, if it was 50. I like don't um, have to rejuggle the budget, right? <laughs> yes, we you, you can move money sort of around between these. If the co construction cost comes in very high, um, then this construction contingency here also ratchet up uh, proportionally. And so you might take some of your owner's project contingency and put it into your construction contingency um, so that you go into construction with a robust construction contingency yep. and then you would just have less money to spend on those um, optional items or just uh, yeah okay Christine are you are you all set I'm good thank you thank you so much Xander 
Um, I just wanted to invite Sharon to maybe talk about the the like the actual machine here, right? Like I'm old enough to remember when a book sorter was a person. Um, and RFID was a card that we literally signed. And so just like what what is the role of this in terms of like the savings in our day-to-day -day library expenses? Uh, because this is something that is going to push up against the rest of the AV budget potentially. Yeah, thank you for Sharon? asking, Xander. Um, so, it's, so a lot of us keep talking about industry standards and it is for a library of our size, it is the industry standard that um, we should have an automated materials handling system because the return on investment is absolutely there. I don't have those figures in front of me, but I can get them. Um, so the benefit of this machine that I that um, it, that we've been talking about for so long is that it allows the staff that we do have to 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 focus on front facing customer service tasks as opposed to sitting in a back room and just scanning every item that comes back um that is time taken away from being with the public so so once a building project happens usage increases and that's that's the way it has happened for 100 percent of the construction projects from across the state and so in order to rein in additional staffing costs uh this machine will allow us to continue with the status quo on top of the fact that this new building will be designed so much more efficiently the sight lines are going to be there so so the combination of those things will allow us to maintain our staffing levels thank you xander did that uh, help that's great thank you Thank you so much. Craig, back to you. Fantastic. Um, next. Uh, another question, actually something that um, Alex had brought up at the beginning portion of the meeting was uh, the ff &E budget, reducing it by a million dollars. The question that Alex had was, I'm sorry if I butcher it, but um, you know, can the design be done as if we still had that million dollars. And then once we know, once all the cards are on the table, we know how much everything costs and how much and what funding is really available. At that point, can we make adjustments by striking things out? So I asked that question of Feingold Alexander and they said, yes, the, um, the ff and &E designer Stephora uh, would be able to do that. Correct. But they did say um, Stephora would not do that inventory of existing items that would not be in the, that is not in their proposal. Um, and I mentioned that we were talking about um, George Hicks Richards doing that. Um, He's on it. Awesome, wonderful. Uh, and they suggested taking pictures, taking a picture of each piece, as well as dimensions. So I'm a list sure George will love doing that. <laughs> and dimensions would be of uh, great help when it, when it comes to that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. then one one more update having to do with budget, but also somewhat schedule was Sean had asked, um, is there any precedent for MBLC to make more than one disbursement in a fiscal year? Mm -hmm. And um, so I forwarded that question to the MBLC and the response was that it depends, um, that it is possible, but it uh, depends greatly on uh, what the annual cap from their administration and finances, how many grant payments they're making across all projects. And if there is money um, to do a second disbursement or a partial second disbursement. So while it's possible, it's not something that we can really count on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then last, uh, the value management list. Let's see where, where is it, where is it, where is it? Sorry, too many windows open. Yeah. I hope I didn't close it. All right, let me check my files. I have accidentally closed it. Okay, 
So the one open item was the cost estimate for swapping out synthetic slate mm -hmm. in lieu of the real slate. Uh, but we finally got information back from both cost estimators. They were largely in agreement. Um, one thought it would be um, $290,000. One thought it would be $300,000. So averaging those two together, we get a $295,000 anticipated cost reduction. Um, I also identified, as, when we're going through that, I identified a, a, a mathematical error. This previously was uh, $65,000, but uh -huh. should have been cut in half to 32.5. So taking those two changes uh, and applying them, this is our new total cost reduction based on the v, accepted VE items. So two point, almost $2 million. Above $2 million. Yeah, just above $2 million. Yeah, okay, good. Questions about this? Okay. Thank you, Craig. Certainly. So if you and I'll would, stop sharing the screen. Thank you. That would be that would be great. Okay. So I don't think we have any reports from design or outreach since we're in a little bit of a holding pattern. Is that right? Christine. Alex, the, Alex. The, the only comment that I would make is to Xander's point that the um, there actually was a push in the outreach newsletter as well as um, sort of a trying to get out the word about um, the state funding initiative with uh, Senator Comerford and Representative right. Dom and a link was provided for people to speak out. Um, and that's certainly something that we can continue to maybe push in different channels and work on. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Alex. Okay. Next item is our meeting schedule. So, Sharon, do we have Wait. another meet? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I, I just, uh, so the value management list, do we need to vote that? No? We, have we done that all already? Great. Ignore me. Thank you. Yeah, we were, we're waiting for the figures exactly. And there, thank you for adjusting the mathematical error. Certainly. So, Sharon, two weeks from today, are we on for a another uh, JLBC meeting? That would be the twentieth of of twentieth October, and hopefully by that time uh, we'll be uh, in into design <laughs> development <laughs> or something close. So, the twentieth of October, Sharon. Uh, so I have taken all of the meetings out of my calendar because I, I thought that's what we did uh, when we got hung up by things. But so I guess I'm, I'm asking the group, should we, starting with the 20th, put it all back into our Google machines every other week after that? Yes, we'll do. I, th I think that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, and, and my could, next question is 5 p.m. So on the 20th, could we do 4.30? Does that work for people? Okay, so let's say 4.30 on the 20th and please save uh, that time um, every other Thursday and uh, we'll be in a better position hopefully soon to figure out uh, when we get more information from Craig about uh, scheduling our subcommittee meetings. Okay. So no questions about the schedule. I have received or know of no correspondence. I know of no topic not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So the next item would be item number 10. We have uh, nine attendees. So uh, and thank you very much to those who are attending. Uh, we have now an opportunity for public comment. If anyone would like to make a comment, if they would raise their virtual hand, that would be great. Okay, I see no, no virtual hands. So with that, it looks like we have completed our agenda. I wanna thank you all and wish you um, a good, uh, good weekend and look forward to seeing you in a, in a couple of weeks.
Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.